Hello, you're listening to the Shetland Times podcast, and this week, I, your host, Marilyn Robertson, I'm joined by Sarah Pascoe, comedian. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. It's my first time in the Shetland Islands. How are you finding it so far? Well, I only saw about half an hour of daylight, yeah. because my flight was very delayed in the wobbly, windy air, So, but what I've seen has been excellent. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, how was the landing? Was it okay? Yeah, I, I was absolutely <laughs> fine. I've had worse. Okay. So when they said, oh, it's turbulence in this tiny plane, I thought, oh, gosh. Because once I was in a plane trying to land in Belfast, not me, I'm not a pilot. I was, I was a passenger <laughs> in a plane trying to land in Belfast for a gig. And um, three times they came into land and the turbulence, we kept dropping out of the air and tipping over to the side. And they kept coming up in the air again and circling around. And we just didn't trust the pilot or trust anything. It was so horrible. People were being sick and screaming. Oh, yeah. So this one was just like, wobble, wobble, hooray. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> That's good. Do you get some time to see Shatton tomorrow? No. Okay. No, I get out at 10 in the morning. But unless the flight's delayed, in which case, yes, I'll be here for three days. <laughs> see that, yeah, it's, yeah, it's worth it. Um, thanks for coming. So you did this show at the Edinburgh Fringe? Yeah, so basically, hopefully I'll remember it, but I did the show for a month for Edinburgh. I've done it once since, and then there's tonight. Cool. So I'm going to have a lot of it written on my arm. That's just amazing. in case. Yeah, just all the notes. I'm going to be at the side of stage when you're on with my pad trying to remember it while listening to you. Yeah, I would write notes on my hands, but I sweated so much. I used to have a joke on my hand where it, on my hand I wrote enter segue here. Yeah. And I look at my hand for ages, then like scratch my head so the audience could read yes. it. Like, ha ha yeah. ha. But every night I sweated so much. Like they just thought. It was a black smudge on my hand. Oh. <laughs> she's just killed a spider. What's she showing us? <laughs> I know. Horrible girl. But that's a sign of being very healthy, I think, if you sweat a lot on stage. Okay. It's supposed, be, it's supposed to be a really good sign if your body sweats a lot. Okay, that's good yeah, to hear. It's healthy, yeah. That's nice to hear. Um, but that's great, and this is your first time in Shetland. Yeah. Have you got any expectations or Well, obviously, hard stories? Um, ponies, of which I've seen none, and I heard two sheep to each person, of which I've seen none. So I see they've all blown into the sea. You've tempted me here with animals, <laughs> and then there aren't any. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do that with fuck. Yeah. We put them in the sheds for winter. Yeah, Take like in the hide, them, hide them away from the tourists. So what's your show about? I, As, I don't know. It's like, do you find this is stand-up? Like, unless you actually have like a story, it's so difficult to say. It's kind of about the last year because your stand-up's always about like what's been going on. And so I like, I started this, so uh, yeah, last Christmas... I went away to like a spiritual yoga retreat. And oh, it kind wow. of starts with that. And yeah, it's the first time I came out of a relationship and I'm basically single for the first time since 2001. So a really long time I've been in like overlapping relationships. And you're single in Shetton right now? Yeah. So you're fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> if you go out tonight, yep. you'll like be fighting them off. Yeah, what I need is a guy with property very far from mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how a lot of folk end up here. They come out of a relationship, come to Shetland. I do that. Never want to leave. Oh, that's it. What to... do they do with their time? Um, oh, the all sorts. Come Swimming to in the sea? It's too cold now. Um, yeah, yeah, it's cold. There's a lot of people who brave it with wetsuits all year round. Do they? All year round, do they? It's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you do it? Yeah, I like to swim in the sea. Do you? Yeah. yeah it's this cold. But in a wetsuit? I just like to just jump in, be in for like a minute and then run out yeah, again. That's what I find very exhilarating <laughs> as well. But I don't like it. I've had it actually even in Edinburgh. So even in Edinburgh in August, going into the sea and putting my head straight in and then like hyperventilating all day. <laughs> like, yeah, I just got <laughs> catch my breath now. <laughs> just to feel some normality from the fringe. Yeah, it does go. <laughs> I <Actually>, feel again. <laughs> The word Maril, the building we're in is called mm. Maril, and Maril is the Shetland dialect word for phosphorescent algae in the sea. Is it? So about this time of year, October, November, yeah. if it's been still, although it's been windy today, yeah. if it's been still for three days, yeah. the water lights up when you touch it and move oh. it around. So I always go for a swim oh. once in the Maril every yes. year, and it's like swimming through space. Oh it's my god! pretty trippy. Pretty that cool. sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds amazing. What's the word, Maril? Maril. So Maril. The, this building is named after the flickering so lights in the, the sea. The audience will feel like they're swimming through the phosphorus of our words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like wading through mine, like, yeah. enough. But that's and so, so how often do you gig here? Is um, it is there enough for you to do? Um, no, well, before, <laughs> before I go to do any shows Sith, then I usually organise a few private gigs for mm. friends and family where I run through the show, then read out notes for other idea jokes, and then they rip it all to pieces. They do? Yeah, and I'm like, rip it now, so the audience doesn't rip really? me on the side. Yeah, so they're like... What do they say? Um, well, there's nice things too, yeah. but they're like, drop that, that was weird, you gave no context. Oh, that really? won't make sense, people don't Oh, you sound like you've got... I'd be <laughs> so too sensitive for that. If I was like, Mum, what do you... Shut up, Mum! You don't even know... You don't even do comment 
comedy. <laughs> that would be so bad. I just because I, I think it's really conscientious the fact you don't have lots of nights to try stand up, and yeah. every time you do stand up here, there's a pressure to do something completely different. I was gonna, I was gonna say, if you've got a small audience, you must be always aware. Though five ten percent might have seen you do the best stuff before, and so you just have to. That's probably good for your turnover of material. Yeah, but it just means yeah. you can't hone it very well. Yes, and also, do you find if, is there a thing where they want to hear jokes about? Shetland or oh, no yes yeah. yes it is um, what I've done th- my show tonight is actually um, my Edinburgh show condensed into 20 minutes but oh, then rewritten yeah. for a Shetland audience uh, okay, yeah. so what was explaining Shetland to Sooth audience yeah. is joking about the way people see Shetland to, our, uh, to ourselves yes. yeah okay and That's I've clever. taken the liberty so it's going to be like mostly in dialect as well oh is it yeah it's exciting but I hope that it is that if you watch it it makes sense <laughs> Yeah, me too. I think that's really exciting. Just once. Yes. But and so can everyone in the audience speak dialect? Yeah, because like, yeah. you get people from all over, but once you've been here very, for a very short time, you'll know the words. Uh, okay. I'm not in broad dialect, but just some yes. words that would slip out that South you'd have to change. Uh, okay, give me an example, please. Um, oh, well, one of the words I talk about is spaggy. Spaggy. Spaggy? Well, there's no spaggy. English equivalent to spaggy. Spaggy. Spaggy? Spaggy. Yeah. yeah. It's when you've exercised a lot one day yeah. and the next day you have an ache. Ah. You're spaggied. You got spaggy. Oh, I see. It's a really good word, actually. That's really good. That's I don't really think good. there's an English word for that. Well, it's just lactic acid. <laughs> so we just use the science. Muscle fatigue. Yeah, just, it's just lactic acid. <laughs> That's spaggied. I love yeah. it. Isn't it strange how different languages have evolved and another language has gone yeah we don't need a word for that we just explain it yeah. <laughs> we just, just today exercise and today I'm really aching we'll just stop exercising we'll and then it won't be a thing yeah <laughs> that'd be cool so mm. um, it's really nice that you've come up to do this one off mm. gig has, it, has your material been changing quite a lot over the fringe or has it been quite a when you write material mm. is it quite set when you start performing it or do you allow for it to evolve and change uh, previews which is my favourite time it's just cause, because I usually do about 50, so like more than the fringe, and that's the thing. 50? Yeah. Wow. Because I love it. I'd much rather be on stage for an hour, and it's like, i tell you why I love it. Number one, you're allowed to take your pad on stage, <laughs> and it's just something psychological, and it means that expectations are lowered, so the audience think they're seeing something that's really new, and actually most of it isn't that new, or you've, you're weaving it in, or it's links that are new, or it, and it's shortening stuff rather than... And I love like babbling around an idea with low expectations. So I feel like your brain does just have to eventually release some tension and like pull a joke out of somewhere. And sometimes yeah. that's quite a good way of getting them. Easier than sitting down and going, and then what would be a funny thing to say? <laughs> and, and also, and yeah, and so the kind of gigs that I would do a preview in are probably gigs I wouldn't do anymore in terms of like, oh, I'd go and do 20 minutes there. So if I offer, they offer it to me, I'll go, I'll, I'll do an hour, and I find it really useful. But then what it means is, so that's the whole process of, like, it changes and changes and changes. And then by Edinburgh, I do anything that doesn't work or isn't working will go, but it won't be. If I've got, if I write new stuff while I'm in Edinburgh, I won't put it into the show. But for touring, an hour has to become 90 minutes, because you have to do four, two 45s. We don't have to. That's how I like to tour is 245s, which means that I always know if I'm writing in Edinburgh, stuff's extending out, I go, I'll save it for the tour. Cool. Kind of thing, yeah. This is really good for me just to learn. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a podcast of Shouting Times listeners, yeah. it's just it's, me yeah, but it's getting good, advice. It, but it's a good thing to have in mind that Edinburgh is the starting point, because at the beginning it feels like the end point, like you work all year for an Edinburgh <laughs> yeah. show, and then you go, da-da, and you feel very anticlimactic. And if you start going, okay all year you work to do good Edinburgh so then you've got this thing to sell the rest of the year which is like the product that you've made and then when you're touring around the new show or the show after Edinburgh you can be putting new stuff into it working up your next show but trying it in front of audiences yeah so it kind of works all in rotation cool and you've yeah. done lots of panel shows as well mm. you did QI you had a piece about being on QI as one of my favourite jokes in the oh, world oh thank you about um, the equivalent of like yeah when people say about having children yeah and... I love that so much yeah um, but how do you find when you do that do you mm. have set material you write for that because do you feel like if you they, do all, they all they have are... different amounts of prep and I kind of I now well there are a couple of, so Mock the Week everyone I think it's an open secret that you prep for they tell you the yeah. topics and, and lots of people get writers on that because they uh, when you sit down there you can see actually I'm sure I'm not, I'm not breaking any rules by talking about wait can I see it and then you can just nod or shake no, no, your no, head no 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 what, <laughs> what you can see if you watch Mock the Week you can see people looking down at the desk yeah and that's because they're checking their notes 
and um, and I've you notice it more and more. You notice it when people are very new on the show as well. That when someone else is talking, they won't be listening. They're looking down. Going, oh, what was that on Boris Johnson? What was that on Boris Johnson? So those those kind of shows, you have lots of prep. QI, obviously, the whole point is you don't know anything, and they would be annoyed if you had asked someone. Wow, so that really is oh, ad yeah, It really, really, really is ad I mean, obviously, the host has got, like, so Sandy talks to people who have a script that she's reading off Auto queue, but no, they don't want any of you. There's, I think there's one person, there's a rumor going around, there's one person who demands to see the script because they're worried they would want to look funny. But most people are supposed to look stupid, not funny. That's really good because you do feel like, uh, well, I love Mark the Beginning QI, but you do feel like QI is such a, like, a natural conversational piece. It, but QI is like a really long, boring dinner party, <laughs> which they actually let it down into a really watchable show, but a lot of it is very dry <laughs> for that reason. Cause also, and also, quite often, no one is trying to get in. You're just all sitting there, like, smiling at each other, like, mm. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like you've got loads of jokes about, like, yeah, the slow worm. Oh, yeah, because like, anything <laughs> could come up. Yeah, so you just, and quite often you're just out of your. In the area of expertise going wow okay that's wow that's learning under the sea that's fascinating <laughs> that's it and then so have I got news for you the first time you go on it they, they give you some prep they ring out the day before and they go just so you know it's going to be this story from parliament your team's going to be dealing with this and make sure you know about this story and so you get like a heads up but then after that you just have to have read the news which is annoying <laughs> yeah no I never really read the news I don't read the news I know what's news. happening in Shetland to an extent yeah but that's all that's probably all you need to know in Shetland <laughs> um, I don't really read the news as in I just I'm not and so usually it's only for revision for a show just so I know who the Prime Minister is because I once said Ed Miliband (laughs) 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 he wasn't he wasn't but in my universe everyone had only been talking about Ed Miliband for ages (laughs) so I didn't know that's amazing yeah but most of them are no prep at all and they're the ones that's why it's great because you're not ever eating to material and if it comes up accidentally it looks off the cuff yeah so yeah that's cool. Yeah. And when you're actually touring around, if you got like, <laughs> I'm just getting tips and advice from yeah. my life, uh, if this happens. But do you have like set things you do in locations or things for normality when you're on tour to keep it? I think. Homely? I think. Well, you don't know until you do it. I was always really scared of touring because I thought if I don't like it, then what am I going to do? Because <laughs> it's almost like you're working till this point. We go. You build an audience so you can go out and just do a gig by yourself, and people have come to see you. And I was really scared. I thought, what if it's... And it's so much easier than Edinburgh. Because you're not being compared to anyone else. You're not being reviewed. And your audience have only seen you that day. They've never gone to see five shows before. They're not going to... See, you don't have any sense of competition. Just, this is what I made for dinner. And they go, thank you, I was hungry. And yeah. then you feel so <laughs> civilised. And, um, and I think that's... So I think people have different ways uh, of dealing with it. Mine is kind of like... I like to have... Either stuff to like, pl- I'm planning to watch back in my hotel room, or I like t- to know what I'm going to have for dinner. Basically, there's this thing called Deliveroo in all major cities, which is a <laughs> game changer. I don't think you have it in the Shetland Islands. No, I'm sorry. I've, I've been looking around for the cyclists, and there aren't any. But um, basically, so what cyclists. I do in the interval, I will order my dinner, and it, so it comes when I walk off stage, and then I carry it back to my hotel, and it, make, and it just makes me feel much better. It, it, it feels less like oh, I'm queuing up at the Tesco Metro to get a pot noodle to have in my travel lodge. Yeah, so you know, as soon as the show's finished, you've got comfort and food yeah, and Yeah, so I know space. what I'm going to eat and then I'll have my dinner. And, then, and so it just, it just feels more civilised because... Also, it's because I'm vegan as well. I think there's never this, like, adventure of, like, oh, I can eat anything. It's like, oh, I'm going to have some peanuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shannon's got some good vegan restaurants. Yeah, well, I had a lovely vegan meal today. Oh, cool. Really, really, cool. really lovely. I was. I like, we don't have vegan restaurants, but oh. we've got some restaurants that do amazing vegan mm. options. Yes, that's what I should say. Yeah, that's what I, I just. I, I had and like, three times. I checked with them that it was vegan because it was so nice. Really? Yeah. Because and also because they did me a risotto. First of all, they showed me the menu and I need the vegan menu, and they said this is it. And then I checked. Are you definitely sure it's a risotto? It doesn't have like milk or cream in it. And they're like, no, no, no. And butter? No, 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 no. Then they gave me oat cakes with butter, and I was like, um, I'm a vegan. They're like, that is vegan butter. And I was like, okay, you've passed all the tests. <laughs> the risotto came with this like grated cheese, like grilled, and I was like, um, there's cheese on this. And they're like, that's vegan. <laughs> so, like, obviously, I kept saying, like, I am from the mainland. <laughs> I'm explaining do veganism like, to do you. They, do they think vegan's vegetarian? <laughs> yeah, that's why I kept checking, like, mm, mm. and I just didn't trust them, and they were right, and I was wrong. So I apologise to the Shetland Islands and their vegan options. That's good, but I'm glad you had a nice meal. Yeah, really, really nice. That's good. Yeah. And you, I decided you don't have more time to explore. Mm. 
But when then, I had originally said yes to the gig, I was hoping I would like come for a few days. But then this is what always happens: is that then you get up at work and you can't. So it's boring. So are you you're based full time in London. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's it. So and then, what do you have like? Do you ever have a period of time though in the year when you get a break? You can kind of, you can, you can write breaks into your own schedule. But, but usually what happens is that, so that this year I'm going to Australia in December for two weeks of gigs. Wow. I'm doing that as like that will be my holiday. <laughs> Are you doing a gig every day? No, not every day. And I'm staying on a little bit afterwards and then I might go... Basically, I'm going to go somewhere on the way home before coming back for the new year. So basically, I'll, I'll go... So, I'll have a holiday yeah. like in between when there's definitely no gigs on Christmas and New Year. And an island where no one can get you. Yeah. Like Fiji or something. Yeah, Fiji or Bali. But I'll probably a spider will get me. <laughs> <laughs> it'll serve me right. It'll serve me right. That's so why I went to New Zealand this year mm. and um, me and my brother are cursed and we always end up in a and every year. And it's the first week in New Zealand and I got these weird melts in my, like lumps in my leg, oh. like weird pussy blisters but yeah. it's like I had a whole bit of my routine in New Zealand about how much I love New Zealand because there's yes. no poisonous spiders <sighs> there Yeah, three white tail spider bites and it's like the only poisonous animal they have white <laughs> tail spider. I think it's white tail yeah and how did it get you? Australia oh, oh um, I was sitting out right. drinking oh. one night in the dark oh. <laughs> when I was in Costa Rica I got bitten by a fire ant <gasps> and it was so strange because I just put my hand down on a chair and then I felt it like a pin going in and then it's that thing like you actually go think oh, I looked, because it's like a table of about 24 people on this spiritual retreat. Everyone was... Was that on the spiritual retreat? Yeah, everyone was looking at me like I was crazy. But I couldn't see a thing. And it's, I, all I had was this pain and this thing to describe it. And But they actually did say, oh, there's fire ants. And it's like the seventh most painful thing. Really? But it's, but it's really small. So it's not... And really intense pain, of it. though. Yeah, it's really intense How long pain. did that last? Like an hour. It was dramatic. But I didn't have to go to any. <laughs> Oh, I just ended up at the doctor's. Yeah, how oh, did you? Yeah, they... I just the idea. If they said to me, "Oh, a spider was on you," you take it back. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You know, because I never even sat, saw it, but I was drunk, yes. so I didn't feel it at the time. Yeah. I can't believe you got bit by a fire ant. Yeah, I thought well, they might be like it. very intense. Yeah. But yeah, I got really obsessed with looking up all of the most painful things, and the only reason they ranked them is people test all of them. So people have to actually voluntarily people want to do it, like literally scientists or people who want to know will go, I'll get bitten by that animal, and then I'll be bitten by that snake, and then I'll pick up that. Because I had a scorpion in my room, that's the thing. That's the other thing, I was really obsessed with all the people. pet scorpion. No, <laughs> no I had this little brown scorpion in my room in Costa Rica, and they wouldn't take it out, because they said it will only hurt you if you step on it. And so, yeah, for the first few days I couldn't really sleep, because I kept thinking it was in the bed with me. They didn't get it in the bed. Just sat on the wall. That's terrifying. Yeah, I didn't like it. Why don't you just get like a bowl on it and just have it under the bowl so at least you know what it is? I could have done. And then, but this is where being a vegan is really shit. Because I'm just like, I can't. I'm not allowed to imprison it in case it dies. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, When did you become vegan? Not that long after I started stand up. So I I think about nine years ago. So, like, quite a long time. Eight or nine years. Long time now. And how, how did you get into stand-up back to later, say, nine years ago? It wasn't my plan. I feel, <laughs> I feel like you've always planned to be a comedian. No, no. Well, no. Um, long story short, I was in Amsterdam, and I've always enjoyed comedy, and I've always thought it'd be nice to try and do it, because I love the fringe. Mm. Um, but long story short, I did filmmaking and things, and then I got robbed, and all my cameras and equipment all yeah. got stolen. And I was like, what career could I have that's creative that folk can't steal from you? So it's like, yeah. oh, if you did stand up, it's oh, all in your head. I really hope no one steals your jokes. I know. Ever. <laughs> Imagine if tonight, and you go away, and literally, I'm your worst nightmare, and then I'm just like, in two weeks' time, going, yeah, you know about Alan Shetland Islands? <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to say this bit in dialect. <laughs> <laughs> That's my stuff. There's one time when I was working with the sheep. You wouldn't yes. work because you'd be like, I was butchering the sheep for um, yeah. <laughs> non vegan friends. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, that's horrible about your stuff being stolen. But it's very true about this comedian is the lightest job. I that's things like even with touring, there's no set. I sometimes have an iPod or like a USB with my music on it, and that's it. And so yeah, I, it's it is light. Do you have a specific work-on song you like to use? Not at the moment. Sometimes I do if it references to material or links in. But at the moment, I don't care. I don't care. I actually have a thing at the moment with like technicians and how they have to listen to other people's music. So I just go about like, whatever. It's risky because you go whatever you want to listen to as the audience are coming in. And then sometimes it's like, oh, this is funky. And other times you're like, oh dear, they're playing hymns. <laughs> they're playing hymns. <laughs> the president. <laughs> yeah. But how did you? So how did mm. you get into stand up? It's all like an accident. I feel like there's like all these different ways I could tell it. I was I was an actor, 
and I always wanted to be an actor and so part of the thing is that I was doing a show in London like a fringe comedy show it's called News Review which actually if you're ever in London I don't know if you might want to come do that something it's six weeks and you basically write these topical sketches and then you two girls two boys and there's parody songs we change the words but actually it's brilliant and at that time you were getting paid cash in an envelope which makes it sound much more olden days than it is <laughs> ten years ago and a cash in an envelope and um I just really loved it. One of the boys in the cast was a stand-up comedian. I did not know that stand-up comedy was not improvised. So I had probably seen, in my life, like as in on TV... No, I went to see Harry Hill on my 18th birthday. So he's him. improvising. I love him. Yeah, he's amazing. And he's the nicest man, is the other thing. Like, just genuinely... Oh, it just gives... Yeah, amazing, kind, interested, supportive, and so funny, like, consistently. Um... I've seen him and I've seen Jack D on television and Billy Connolly. So yeah. I've seen all of those three, thought they were geniuses, which they are, yeah. but I thought they were improvising. And I, was, and I was always thinking, this is amazing how they remember what they've said before and then they make a joke about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to see this guy who I also incidentally loved. And, um, <laughs> which is like, that's why you went to see him. But, yeah, but also that's, that's the other reason I went into it is actually as I loved this guy, he was a comic, and then when he broke up with me, I then started doing comedy just to spite him. <laughs> so that's the other way of telling the story tonight. But the thing is, I saw stand-up comedy for the first time, which is basically all of these boys doing five minutes holding pads, being shit. I was like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> Dude, I can stand with a pad and be shit. <laughs> and I can. Yeah. I know, and it's a good way to... I said I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know so. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the best way I think to d- explain stand-up comedy is like it's a one-pattern stand-up. Mm. It's one-pattern show because mm. as you you script it, rewrite it, there's room mm. for movement. But yeah, you and don't also, like and don't the best, heckle. The best <laughs> comics are the best actors, and it's not a coincidence because when you watch people again and again, and it always looks like something just occurs to them. When you watch someone look like they fumbled a word which then looks like they've improvised a joke based on the Freudian slip they just made. Like, you go, oh, you're ma- masterful. <laughs> everyone in here thinks they are watching spontaneity and really good comics conjure that up. So you never... The fact that it's written is baffling. You go, but how did you write it down? You just you asked that guy his job and they would spoke for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I love, and I love that. I love it when it looks like that. Well, I love the people, yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Oh, thank you. Because we've got sure to do so yes. some time to rest. But thank you so much, Shira. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure to have you on the Shelton Times thank podcast. Thank you.